the climate web actually has a very specific beginning. I've, I've had a long-standing interest in knowledge management and, and how can we use information better for decision making and for decision making support. But about five years ago I was at a conference in New York and watching the authors of a, of a very interesting book called Influencer, The Power to Change Anything. And the authors were talking about their research into human decision making. And by, in, by implication, how can you influence human decision making? And what they were saying was that when we make a decision, and it really doesn't matter what the decision is, any decision, no matter how minor, how major, we're asking ourselves the same two questions. Is it worth it to me to engage on this issue and to make this decision? And will this decision make any difference? Can I do it? So, and I, I translate these two points into the is it worth it, can I do it questions. And I realized just sitting there watching these, the, the authors of, this, of the book talk about this, that when it comes to climate change, we as sort of the consulting community, the environmental community, have done a terrible job of answering those two questions for people. We tend to go in and explain with our 20 PowerPoint slides our epiphany on climate change, on why climate change is an emergency, or why energy efficiency is the answer, or anything. I mean, many, many variations on the theme. But we go and explain our epiphany, our thinking, our unassailable logic. And we expect the audience to walk out of the room with an epiphany. And, and it turns out that's just not the way the human mind works. It, you, unless you present the information that allows them to, to answer these two questions, is it worth it, can I do it? And you have to let them answer those two questions roughly at the same time. You can't, you can't tell them the is it worth it part and then two weeks later, come back with the can I do it part because they'll have already forgotten the is it worth it part. So as I, as I was sitting there, it just occurred to me, what if we tried to use knowledge management tools, uh, and in this case, the climate web is what it's turned into, but, but the software that the, knowledge, that the climate web uses. What if we tried to use knowledge management tools to help people answer those two questions for themselves? Is it worth it? Can I do it? The real challenge is that each person needs different information to answer the is it worth it, can I do it questions. And so even though there's an infinity of information out there on climate change, on pretty much anything to do with climate change, that information just doesn't get to the people who are trying to answer those two questions for themselves, or at least the right information doesn't get to those people. The climate web is an effort to to make it possible for people to find the is it worth it, can I do it information from sort of this infinity of climate information that's sitting out there. And so it was, it was literally watching that presentation that led us to say, let's try and build the climate web to help solve that problem. So over the last five years, we've input and organized and curated a very large amount of climate information into the climate web. We're not talking just climate science here. We're talking the, all, the literature of the psychology of how do you communicate climate change, how, the, the psychology of how do we perceive risk, how do businesses manage risk, uh, how is the ethics community thinking about climate change, how is the activism community thinking about climate change. Uh, all of this is in the climate web. And so what we do is basically pull in uh, reports, books, blogs, news reports, all sorts of stuff. And we're up to about 13,000 sort of specific documents, reports, and 15,000 news stories, blogs, website links. We also include websites on all sorts of stuff. And individuals who's working on different topics. So you have this sort of mass of information. But the climate web isn't intended just to be a filing cabinet. No matter how big a filing cabinet it, it, it is, that's not really the goal. The goal is to then extract sort of key tables, key figures, the best thinking, the best ideas, link all of that together so that you don't need to know what report you're looking for. You need to know what question you have. And then the climate web, ideally, and, and obviously this is a work in progress, it can never be finished, 
But ideally, what we will have done in the climate web is organize some of the best ideas, thinking, graphics, tables, figures, reports, sources, news stories, put it all into a package for you and so that you can then access that, that knowledge. And hopefully, you will find actionable knowledge there that you simply wouldn't find if you Google a search term, come up with 25 million hits in a quarter of a second. You only look at the first two things that show up on your screen. They probably aren't the best things to be looking at to answer that question. That's what we're trying to get at with, with the climate web, is, is how do we organize, link information in ways that people can actually find it and use it. One of the really interesting things that we're doing right now is, is sort of dashboards, where we're organizing for business risk or for carbon pricing. Dashboards that, that summarize the entire topic of carbon pricing and what's going on with carbon pricing, what are the key issues with carbon pricing, on one screen with pop-ups that you can read, sort of slides that summarize key, key points. And so somebody can sort of get an overview of the entire topic in 10 minutes. If they want, they can dive in much deeper and, and read lots of reports and blogs and discussions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they don't have to. They can, through the dashboard, get a very quick sense of what that is and track how the topic is, is evolving and changing over time. So the climate web is trying to be, in some weird sense, it's trying to be all things to all people, which, which is not always a great idea. But in this case, once you have this, this collection of information, this, this almost infinite amount of curated information, you can organize it in many, many different ways for different people trying to solve different pe questions or solve different problems. And that, that's the beauty of the software that we're using, the brain software, because it makes it really flexible and really easy to reorganize information in a way that, that allows a specific person to find something.